So hopefully you've watched the guide to making fancy straps and you've made yourself a pair of pretty fancy looking straps. Obviously if you've got a heavy fabric or a fabric that doesn't like to fold feel free to do these straps a different way but I do recommend doing the straps and having them on the connectors before starting the bag because it is pretty fiddly to um, put the straps on the bag after so if you haven't done it you need to get on right so for this part we will need our outer uppers it's got two of those and our accent strips so i'll just split these up a second so one over there one for me one for you so the next step you can see i've already drawn my line because it can be quite fiddly to get the ruler in here so if you look at step 11 on the pattern it will give you the measurements so we've got one long line that goes across and then we've got marks that come in from the sides now these are hidden so don't worry about them but i suggest using a pen that will bleed in case the bag does get wet so you've got you've measured down you've marked across and then you've measured in from the sides and this will give us the placement for our straps oh a bit of sniffles today now decide how you want your strap so do you want the accents facing outwards or inwards Hmm. I think I'm going to go that way. So obviously what you can see I've done, I've twisted mine up. Oops. So make sure your strap isn't all twisty. I'm just going to start with the one side. The bottom raw edge goes up against this long line. And it goes on the inside of this side marker. So you can see where mine is. Up to the wrong line, inside of the side marker. Or, you know what I mean, if we put both there, they're on the insides. And I'm just going to base this one in place to start with. There we go, there's one. So again, check your strap oh, isn't twisty and line up the second one. So, raw edge against the long line and on the inside of this marker. And base that one too. There we go. Now, eagle eyed amongst you might notice I've got the wrong rings on mine. That's just because I really wanted to use this fabric and I didn't have any rainbow hardware. There we go. So that's the first strap basted in place. Now, I'm always good at confusing, so make sure your straps sit in nicely. I've got my accent strip. I'm going to lay it right side to my upper outer matching up the top edge and yes we want the straps poking up through it and you will see why in a second i'm trying to click this without getting my big head in the way Just kind of gently pulling the strap up. It's 
so that the connector strap stays upright. We don't want it to be at an angle. And this is where you go against everything that you think you might forget all you know because we're actually going to sew across the bottom of this accent strip if you feel you need to pin it in place if you're using fabric that can be pinned please do i've just put one there to start me off but using seam allowance we're going to so across the bottom so i'll do mine and then i'll just show you so you can double check there we go. i think my vinyl tried to stretch a little bit there oh the joys As you can see we sewed at the bottom now we can pull this down and in theory in theory it should match the bottom edge of your upper outer Now you can press this if your fabric allows you to. I'm just putting a couple of clips in to stop it waving about. And then we can top stitch this fold down across the top of your accent strip. So I have, this is a top stitch, but I'm really awful with this new machine at doing um, the really tiny top stitch width, unless I've got an edge to follow. So I do mine at a quarter inch because we don't stress over the small stuff. It looks neat. And then all I need to do now is base stitch these together um, across the bottom. There we go. So that is one upper part done. This can be either front or back. I mean, if you wanted to add a name tag I would recommend doing it later when we've added the foam and the same with rivets if you want to add rivets or a second line of support stitches do it later to the foam obviously then you'll get a bit more support then so I'm just going to cut and I'm going to do the second one but I'm going to do exactly the same. So I've got my line, I've got my marks. I'm going to make sure my straps are pointing the same way as that one. So I'm going accents out. Whoop. Base them inside the line. We'll be all good. So if you need to just rewind a little bit. And feel free but I'll meet you in a second when we've done this bit there we go so my two upper parts are done now I had a slight stretch on my fabric my vinyl 
So if you feel your vinyl is stretchy, you might want to put some double-sided tape or glue this down before basting. Because even basting with these really long stitches, it can still shift. Now luckily, I think we're okay, we'll get away with it, but... Oh, crikey. That's those done. So I'm just going to put them to the side a second. So we can work on the front pocket. There we go. So we've got all the pieces we need. So let's have a little look. So we've got our two outer front pieces. And I've got two F1s and an F2. F meaning front. I hope that was the simplest way of doing it, Bill. So I've got two F1s, which I've cut the fabric direction wrong. Oh, never mind. F2 and two out of fronts. Now I'm just gonna check because you might be like me whoop, using directional fabric. So if you are, grab your um one of your upper pieces. So that one matches like that. And I think that one matches that way. So just have a check which one it matches with. So obviously it doesn't match with that one. It matches with that one. So I'm actually going to... Where have my pen's gone? I'm just going to write down here that this is the front so I don't forget and I'm gonna keep these this way up so it is handy to get all your pieces for each section out on your table and at least then you know if there's any pieces left over then you're missing something, obviously. So I've got my zip and I've basted the ends so that the zipper pull doesn't come off. And I've also switched to a narrow foot or you can switch to a zipper foot. Now, if you haven't got, if you've got a wide foot and you're thinking this might be tricky, what you can do is not... Obviously, hopefully you're watching this before you've started. You can leave the zipper longer. Even leave it on the roll. That's what I do. When I'm using continuous tape, I rarely cut it. I just leave the meter hanging off the edge. The zip up here somewhere. So I can sew it in and I don't have to move it around. So feel free to add a bit more tape if you've got a really wide foot to save you faffing about moving the pull or narrow foot, zipper foot, whichever works easy for you. So I'm going to take the one that's going to be my left piece. If you're using non-directional fabric, don't worry, just pick any, but make sure that it is this orientation. So wider than it is tall. And I've got my zipper. I'm going to face it to the outer front. Match it up. And on this right side, I'm going to baste it in place. Don't worry if your zipper has is somehow a bit longer, it's fine. Don't worry about it. As long as we match up the pieces, it's all good. So take one of your F1 pieces and then we're going to place them right sides together and match up 
these right edges obviously as I said my zipper is slightly longer but I'm matching up the edges of the pieces so I know that they're in line and if you want you can use tape or glue and this time we're going to sew them together using seam allowance There we go, happily using seam allowance. And then we just need to fold these back on itself. So they're right, wrong sides together. And give it a press away from the zip. So I'm going to press mine. Obviously, that's if your fabric allows it. And then once it's pressed, we can top stitch down here. I'll give mine a press and then I'll top stitch. Ta da! Shouldn't say that really, but I'm finished yet. So it's one side done. So we'll take our other one. Make sure it is the way around that you want it to be. And then flip it on on top this way we know nothing's moved no funny business i don't know why this pole keeps getting in the way get over there so we're going to match it to the right side of the zipper and again just make sure it's a level with the top and bottom of the these pieces that are already in and once you're happy, base stitch. So obviously feel free to glue it, pin it, tape it. Just make sure you keep well within the seam allowance. Right, so there we go. All basted lovely. And then we need to flip it over so the lining is facing upwards. And kind of the opposite of what we've just done. We're now going to match the linings together, but match up on the left. So same again, just make sure they're level. Pin, glue or tape this, but make sure you stay within the three eighths seam allowance and then sew together using that three eighths seam allowance. And then same as we did before. So we're going to open these up so that they are wrong sides together. Press them away from the zipper and top stitch. So I'll press first and then I'll top stitch. There we go. And then all we need to do is add this lining piece. So we're going to flip this over. And then, oh, you can see where I've done my Franken facing. Match these up. And they should, depending on obviously your zipper width, because not all five, number five zippers are created equal. We are going to match up the best you can these side edges. Don't worry if it's slightly off like mine, because nobody will know. Unless actually you're watching them do this on a video like moi. So, if you're using pins, just make sure you're not pinning through this bit first. 
and all we're going to do is sew these lining pieces together using a regular seam allowance so i'll do it like this so that i can just fold all that out of the way and i know i'm not going to accidentally sew through anything Ooh. first i just need to put my standard foot back on So that's that sewn together now all we need to do is just base stitch across the top edge and across the bottom edge just so we know that nothing funny is going to happen whilst we are constructing Now it does say to open the zipper halfway and the reason for that is if you've got a chunky pull like mine you leave it at the top it's just going to get in the way so just leave it open a bit and that is that one done if you have excess like this little bit of lining sticking out feel free to trim to trim that down that's the front bit done for now uh, we can move on to doing the back pockets now back pocket comes in many pieces just for fun we've got outer back and I'm just going to check the orientation I've got my second upper out of here just want to make sure this is the right way around and it is that's good i'm just gonna leave that there as is no funny business so we've got b1 b2 b3 obviously name b because it's the back oh. sorry i could see words through my fabric and wondered what was going on but yes you also need um your slip pocket marker here Ta -da! Now mine says a different letter so completely ignore what mine says so obviously yes we have the f pieces for the front we've now got the b pieces for the back one two three you will see that they are different sizes. The one and three. Because when joined together, two and three make one. That's how we do our math around here. <laughs> Would have made sense to do it the other way. Anyway, grab your number one piece. Mine has been frank and faced again. Don't waste anything around here. And top long edge. I'm going to take my piece. And I'm matching it up in this corner. If you're worried about this being wonky, what you can do is mark here. mark there and then draw a line across and this will give you something to uh, rest this bottom piece in I'm just going to 
going to do that instead. Something like that. And I'm going to draw around this curved part oh, or draw all over your pattern piece like I've done every time. That's one side done. Flip it over. And do your second side. Oh my gosh, what's gone on there? So just using the straight edge here to line mine up. See, even I go a bit squiffy sometimes. There we go. Totally easy pattern, watch this. Anywho, grab your outer back and we're going to lay these right sides together. Yours will, um, oh my gosh, yours will match the bottom edge. Unless you're like me and you cut it wrong because you didn't listen to your own instructions. But yours will match the bottom. So match the bottom and the top edge and centre. Centre lovely. I'm just going to move mine down a bit otherwise it's not going to get caught in both seam allowances. <clears throat> Perfecto. Now I'm going to grab some pins this time because our lovely, totally neat, super straight line we are going to draw on top of. Draw on top of? Yeah, that's not right. So on top of. So yours will look like this, but we'll obviously be longer and match the top and bottoms. So we're going to sew on top of this line all the way using a nice regular stitch length. Now, if you do struggle with curves, go for a smaller stitch length and just bit by bit by bit by bit. Now, let me grab my oh, noisy pink in she is. I'm going to cut out this bit inside the curves. If you don't have pink in shears, you can just snip notches. This needs to now go on the reverse. So push this through. Oh, crikey, butter fingers. Like that. And then just roll it all between your fingers and press it if you can. So I give it a good. Steamy press, so it's a lovely crisp finish. Now, we need to top stitch around this curve now to hold it in place. It will still function quite well if you don't top stitch it because the pocket will be held down in this seam. So if this curve is super scary, or you think, 
no I can't do that it will still work absolutely fine it won't pull out anyway but what we need to do is top stitch around here again I'm going for a quarter inch because that is the width of my foot it's all good but use your top stitch if you can if you can move your needle if you have a narrow needle or if you're just really good at judging feel free to go for a standard top stitch you know what I mean you know what I mean there we go a nice top stitch see I just find it easier just going with what feels comfortable rather than trying to fight for something that's supposed to be and there we have it and like I said yours will go to the bottom not like mine numpty who cut those off so if you don't top stitch it's all good don't panic but now we move on to b2 and b3 now if you were if you wanted to you could have could pattern because this is going to be at the top so you could pattern match but I didn't and there's no way that's going to match any either way but I digress b2 b3 like so you've got directional fabric make sure that they're both the right way up we're going to flip one on top of the other there is total method in this crazy plan. All will be revealed. I'm just going to sew it across the top using regular seam allowance. Like so. And then we can flip this one. We're going to flip it different because I want all the seams to face down like that so they're going to face the B th B3 piece B3 piece and press okay so all seam allowances are facing down give it a good press and once pressed we can top stitch Again, use whatever top stitch width you're comfortable with. There you go. Yeah, because the idea of the top stitch is just to hold the seam allowance in place and to give it a bit more support. So as long as you're sewing within the three eighths, I don't see any problem. Now, back to the method in my madness. We are going to be putting these together. Now, if this was a lining piece, it would be a very obvious, let me just put that the wrong way, an obvious pocket. But this is a kind of a, a hidden pocket. You should see some of the testers ones. You wouldn't even know there was a pocket there. So when these go together, it's kind of hidden. That's the plan. So, flip that one over, and with your main piece at the top, with the curve, put them on top of each other, right sides together. And the same as we did with the front pockets, we're going to match up the side edges. Make sure you don't pin or clip through the back foot as well. If somehow something funny's happened and your piece is bigger, just make sure the top edge is neat. I would say match up the top edge, don't worry about the bottom edge. 
and then sew down the side using seam allowance. <clears throat> like so and then same as we did again we're going to base stitch across the top and across the bottom edge you can see mine has extended in all places but don't worry we can just trim that off after Trim, trim, lovely one now. There we go, so base stitch, base stitch. Like so. There we have it, and that's our back done. So I'm just going to trim up my front and my back pieces and we can start with some lovely construction. Oh, coming at you with all the pieces now. So we've got our front and our back. We've got our upper outers. And we're also going to be bringing our base piece into the party. I'm just going to pop that onto the side for a second, but that is part of our next construction. So grab one of your outer panels. Make sure it's the right way up. Now this was the back. Let's have a look. That was my front one. This must be my back one. I'm just going to double check that it is the right colours kind of match. And then what we're going to do, just double check, pocket is at the top. I'm going to flip this so that it is whoop, right sides together. You want the accent strip to be at the top and we're going to match the raw edges and sew them together using a regular seam allowance so pin it or clip it if you wish first go oh wrong way and then if you take this bit and flip it up we want all the seam allowances which are not playing ball today to face upwards so here is another bit of our thickness on the bag if we look on the back so obviously we want all these to face upwards you can try and tape it if you wish it might not play ball but do what you need to do and we're going to top stitch the seams upwards again on this accent strip like that lovely you wouldn't even know that there was joins we've got our cute pocket there now we're going to do the same again but with our other outer piece let me just pop this one on the side so Hello, you two back again. Now make sure that when you close your zip, the 
circle is at the top. And then just check that if you've used directional, it's all good. If you're happy, just move that pull out of the way because it just gets in the way. Now, as you can see, my piece is slightly bigger. There is a bit of leeway in case of different zippers being used. So obviously if you didn't have a bigger zipper, you could have used a small one. And that's what this little excess is for. It's a nightmare if you're trying to pattern match. I wouldn't recommend it. Ask me how I know. But what I'm going to do is centre it. So I've got the same amount of overhang on both sides. And then I know my zipper is going to be in the middle. Roughly in the middle. So if I do that get down and I'm going to center so I've got the same overhang on either side although I've actually made this right gap bigger because I know that this is going to stretch as I sew across it happens but if it's ever so slightly out your zip, don't worry. So my overhangs are even because I left a bigger gap on this side and as I thought it would, it all shifted a little bit. And now they're the same. So same again. Flip that upwards, have all your seams upwards, press it if you can, if you can't you can try and glue it, duct tape it or double sided tape it I should say, otherwise do as I do, start off with the seams and then just adjust as you go and we're going to top stitch again. There we go, second one done, all the seams are facing upwards. If you want to, you can trim down the sides or you can wait until we've got the base on, that is up to you. But now we've got our two top half panels done, we can add a base. Move my zipper out of the way again. So we've got this kind of drunken sideways H and right sides together. So match the one long edge to the bottom edge of your panel and sew them together using regular seam allowance. There you go, and once that's sewn in, you can bring the base down and with all seam allowances facing towards the base, we're going to top stitch them in place. So we have a theme going on here, that all the top stitching is done on our accent pieces. There's a theme. So, seam allowances towards the base. Top stitch in place. There we go. Oh, where have I put it? As this one matches up with the bottom of the base here 
Now the instructions show it from that view, but it is exactly the same. So match up the bottom of the panel with the long edge of your base and sew together again using seam allowance. So clip it, pin it, whatever you need to do first and then sew them together. And then once that's, got myself in a pickle now, no room. So same again, seam allowances, you can see it on this bit here, to the base. Towards the base. Glue it, double sided tape if you need to. Press it if you can. We're going to top stitch down here. <coughs> there we go. So you have something that looks like that. That's our outer pieces jigsaw all put together Woohoo! now we can put this on our foam so lay it on the foam trim around it and then either pin it or clip it and once you've done that we'll talk about what to do next so hopefully i can fit this on the table Just move my machine. There we go. So I've got my outer panel. Panel, yeah, let's call it a panel. Outer panel bag done. I've clipped it to the foam, but before I baste it, I'm just gonna um, take some bulk from the corners because obviously when we join it together, we're gonna have bulky corners. So all I'm gonna do is cut off a chunk. Like for for visual reference, that's a good thumb size chunk. Obviously, don't put your thumb near the scissors. Don't cut your thumb. I can't be held responsible. You want to stick your thumb in there. But visual reference, that's about the size. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four corners on each side, and that's all I'm going to do. Fold it back. Cut off a bit. This doesn't need to be um, an exact amount. Get it away. But we don't want it to be in either of the seam allowances. One more up there. There we go. There's little triangles everywhere now. Where are you? There we go. So they're all roughly the same size. But then obviously when we go down the seam lines and the seam lines, just made sure that we've cut it out of where they join. And now we can base stitch this to the foam within the seam allowance. So at around about a quarter inch, nice long stitches. And then once we've done that, we can start trimming the bulk away, but I'll come back and do that. So I'm going to cut the video while I base stitch this because it does take a while. And then I'll come back. Okay, so I have base stitched them together and then what I did next, if I flip this over, is I've trimmed away all the excess from the seam allowance 
the excess foam. So you can see it where I've got my cut corners on the foam and then I've trimmed away the excess. I'm just going to put my straps out the way because next up we need to add our base stabiliser. So obviously if you don't want this and you're going for squishy, you can skip this part. But we are going for structured. Ever so slightly. I've got this, I think this is Decoville, the heavier stuff. Just adds a little, little, little bit of summit, summit. So, I'm going to use my oh, trash in the place. If you can, you could try and fuse these. Obviously, I've not attempted to fuse this to foam before so I really can't advise whether yes or no um, you could pin it which is another option or you can use double sided tape now I'm not going for the corners because I need to sew across there. So if your machine doesn't like tape, you're gonna want to avoid the corners. So we're gonna do some fancy lines in a minute. One extra feature of this bag is the nice base. which is definitely worth giving a go. That's what I'm doing here. I'm just angling it so that I can see and hopefully you can too. This is the same width as your cutout bits. So you can kind of see that it's in line and then try and make it central so the gaps on the short side are even. So that's kind of temporary stuck in place, but I am going to stitch it in place now. Let me grab my fabric marker. Oh, and my ruler. And hopefully the light won't shine on this too much. But we're going to make some diagonal lines to start with. So we're going to go from this corner to this corner. Now obviously you do use a fabric marker as opposed to like a biro or use chalk or something. Because you want to get this far and then have it bleed through the fabric. So that's one diagonal done. I mean, do take your time to make sure this is nice because it is worth, it is worth it. Second diagonal done. And then the next one, we're going to go right down the centre. So I'm just going to find the centre of these short sides. And then if we've cut everything nicely, it should run straight through this X here. Whew. If it doesn't and you find it's slightly wonky, make it go through the X. You will notice more that it doesn't rather than one of the sides being off. There we go. So we've got this like snowflake star shape, but I don't know what it is. 
but yes as I say make sure this line does go through the center of this X it is totally worth it when they when it all matches up what we're gonna do is attach the base piece stabilizer to the foam now by sewing on top of these lines so pick a stitch length you're happy with so I'm going for top stitch stitch length and then I'm going to sew on top of these lines and try as hard as you can to make all these meet And the reason for this is <gasps> now look at that that is lush lush pretty darn looking bad but <laughs> that's just all right it feels so nice too now if you don't wish to add feet, grab a biscuit or skip ahead to the next step. But if you do wish to add feet, then we'll stop ogling our bag butt. I'm going to flip this back over. Sorry, I'm just going to shimmy everything over a minute. I need spice. <laughs> Right, so we've got our outer base template and we're going to match it up here. What I'm actually going to do is just pop a hole in the centre of my feet placement guides. So I'm going to line that up. Hopefully, the join will be level with your centre stitch line. If it isn't, just shimmy it to make sure it is, because this will make sure then that these are even. And draw through your pop towels. See, nice and even. Same again on this side, match it up, but also match up the join with the centre stitch line and give a little squiggle, sure you pop holes like so. Also, oh my gosh. Look at my washi tape. Got a thing for tape. Little thing for tape. So, these are just guides. Now, if you use rivet feet or a different kind of feet, then you'll be doing different things to what I'm doing now. You might be just punching one hole. Now, I can't pick mine up. Oh. Now mine are like a split pin, so they require two. So all I'm going to do is kind of put that on there, like so. And I'm just using this as a guide. So remember, whatever you do on the one, do on the others. Like I said, you might just be doing one hole. I've never used rivet feet. I don't know how they work. Oh, 
but now I need to um, cut, 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 carefully, carefully, carefully. God, I really need a bigger seam ripper. This one's titchy and it hurts my hand. Who puts a brush on the end of a seam ripper? I mean, seriously. People who make these, really? Once you've cut your holes, you can add your feet. Now, as a little tip here, mine come with a split pin, one short one and one long one. I always put the short one facing outside. Do you know why? But then I feel like it's less likely to be near the seam line. Now I am doing a bit of a faux pas here and I've got gold and rainbow because I don't have rainbow feet and the gold kind of blends in. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Come on, last one. There we go. And once they're in, now if you have chosen not to use foam and you've gone for something like what's it called? What's it called? Decaville Light. I don't know, for example, you might need an extra bit of stabilizer on the feet. So you might feel, or you need to cut an extra scrap of something to then place on the feet before you add your washers. And then we're going to protect the lining because these are pointy by covering each one with a scrap of duct tape. So we are ready to fix this together. Now, if you are feeling you need to add some more support to these connector tabs, feel free to add a rivet. And I think I'm gonna do that on mine. So all I'm gonna do is, if I hold it so you can see the right way, I'm gonna go halfway down and try and get it evenly matched within the tab and put one there. You could, if you want, add a second row of top stitching below the first. 
but it's completely up to you. This will be fine. You've got three rows of stitching on there because you basted, you've got the top where you constructed and then you've got top stitching. So you have got three rows of stitching, but if you are worried and you want to add stabiliser, now is the time. So I shall add my rivets in now because I will forget otherwise. Uh, sure, I don't think actually mine needs it. I think it'd be fine. I don't really want to detract away from the of the fabric. Do you know what? I'm gonna leave it. It'll be fine. So I digress. If you wanna crack on, otherwise we move on. So I'm gonna fold this in half. Then here's the fun. We are going to match up the joins. So this one and these ones as best you can. In theory, they should match lovely, but we know, we know it doesn't always happen that way. I'm going to do that on both sides. Right, so I clip my sides together. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to sew up using seam allowance and see how we go. Now, let me just move this so you can see what I'm doing. So once we've done the sides, we can make the corners and you can trim them down a little if you wish, but if you are going to trim it, just don't trim the top bit and the bottom bit because we need to open the seam allowances and it's easier to do if you haven't cut them off. So what I'm going to do is push out the bag. And then open up this side seam. So I've got the bottom of the side seam and match it with that centre line we drew on the base. Match that up. I'll do the same on this one. So open up my side seam. match it to the center line on the base then we can sew across here and across here using regular seam allowance you might need to just squish the bag in a bit more in you know the opposite way There we go. So that is that done.
but I'm going to add some support stitches. Now I always do this when I've got a faux leather base. Always, always do this. I add a second row of stitching behind the first on both sides of the base. But also, because we've got some real thickness in the side seams, have a look in your bag. If there are some areas where you might see a bit of daylight because, you know, it happens. Sometimes your machine skips a stitch as it jumps off the thickness. Um, you can add a second row of stitching on these thick areas as well. So down here, up here, and the same on this side. So I'm definitely going to do the base. And then if needs be, I can add a little bit to the side. And then that is your outer bit done. So bear with me. There we go. So I've got my support stitches. Especially when you've got big bags like this, if you're going to be stuffing it, you know, with the faux leather, you use a longer stitch length. So you don't want it to be opening up. So you've got this um row of support stitches that is outer done this little colorful feast for the eyes um i might trim up the sides just a little bit but there we are that is part one video done catch me over on part two and we'll do the lining and the final construction